次力。Precious Mixity will play a game called Magical Elf Dress Up Game. In this episode, I'll make twelve elven ladies of my own design and give them all names and a little bit of backstory. First, I made a character called Emil. She's a hunter in the elven town of Berimia. The markings on her face and left fingers symbolize her status as a hunter, which is a very important job. Only a chosen few have the right to kill animals, no matter if it's for food, pelt, fur, or any other reason. Emil had to go through years of training before she was considered skilled enough to earn her markings. She's very proud of her work, but she does do other things than just practice and hunt. She loves singing as well as hiking and fishing, and telling bad jokes—really, really bad jokes—and bad puns. Really, really bad puns. This is Asana, Berimia's mage. In this fantasy world of mine, I decided that every town and village has only one mage each. Their job is to protect the town and the people in said town from any harm. When the mage dies, their power will move on to a new person, who then has to learn and control that power. When Asana got her magic, she was only ten years old, so she has pretty much grown up with it. The hardest part of getting new magic at such a young age was to know when and when not to actually use magic. Like, is it okay to use magic in order to get a few more cookies after dinner? Apart from being one of the most powerful people in the world, Asana is also the one everybody goes to when they want good gossip. That she would practice her social skills by translating the orders of guests that had traveled from far away to eat at the family restaurant. That way, Olive quickly learned to deal with her anxieties when around people, and she found her new passion for helping people communicate with one another. Closest you will get. She's not technically a princess because her parents are not the king and queen anymore. They used to be, but then the country decided that there would be no need for a royal family no longer. So the king and queen stepped down from the throne, and instead a new system was created—a system that gave all the ruling power to the mages. So Joran here is an ex-princess, so to speak. Her title means nothing today, even though some might find it an interesting topic during picnics. But now that Yora no longer was destined to become a queen, she could live out her dream. Tutons! But she's so used to politics and governing, so she often goes to visit Asana to hear how everything is going in her kingdom.
series called It's Joran's Best Friend and Former Bodyguard. After the royal family, well, got fired, Joran was out of a job too. The princess did not need any protecting anymore, so what to do now? Well, she actually went with Joran and became a dancer too. She's quite skilled, even if her former career was all about fighting. But she will only dance until she can figure out something else to do. But for a moment, she's very happy by just having the opportunity to stay close to her best friend. And no, nope, the markings on her face are not tattooed onto her skin. She just likes heavy eye makeup. Also, she hates shoes. She never puts them on if she can avoid it. She hates them! Ah! She's a healer in training. She's very talented with herbs and potions, but she's also very clumsy. A little bit too often things leave her hands down to the floor with a big crash. When things happen, she will run away and salt in the river. Under the water most likely. But do not worry, she can breathe below the surface just fine. But she cannot talk to fish, no matter how much she pretends she can. Heroine wants one day to be the most successful healer in the land, but if that is to become a reality, she needs to make sure that her clumsy fingers are not a problem. Maybe fill the floor with pillows? around her. Many think that she just has a very impressive imagination and a good sense of guessing what will happen because she couldn't possibly see into the future, right? That would require some kind of magic and only the mages have the power. But Salaya seems so happy when her predictions happen to be correct so nobody has the heart to tell her to stop. She's not really hurting anyone after all people mostly come to her for relationship advice anyway. If there's anybody in town who knows how to heal a broken heart, it is Zalea. tell her how to live her life. Her two fathers want her to find a partner and get children soon so that they can be grandfathers, but Morgan is not interested at all. She does like kids, but she has never felt like parenthood was anything for her. She will be more than happy to be an aunt to her three siblings kids, but she doesn't need children of her own. But while other people nag, she'll just continue practicing her skills as an actress for the theater. She has been acting since she was a young teen and it is one of her biggest passions. Door. She's a mother of three children, two of which are adopted. Her husband wants more children, but at the moment they have to wait. Jador is too busy being the only healer in town. She does have heroine, but she's in no way ready to become an official healer. So Jador has to work really hard in order to keep everybody healthy. Why is she the only healer, you ask? Because a few years ago, there was a horrible sickness going around and many, many healers died after spending too much time with the sick. 
the ones that survived left hand, but Jador refused. She stayed and is now the only healer left, even though the sickness is long gone. She will never abandon this town and her friends and family. And now, the only human in town, Bly. She's a traveling merchant, somebody who sells things, and often comes to the town of Beremia. Her jewelry are very popular in the town, and she likes the different people she meets there. She would like to stay, but the language barrier is too big. Thankfully, Olive is always nearby, or it would be really hard to get anything sold. It's hard enough as it is already, because Bly has that kind of face that always looks angry, even when she's relaxed. Poor thing, people think she's mad all the time. By the way, due to a deal with her parents, she only has piercings on the left side of her face. or Toshe for her close friends. She's Asada's younger sister, you know, the mage from earlier in the video. They are very close and will always stand by one another, which has been very comforting for Toshe. You see, people from her childhood do not recognize her at all nowadays, because from the longest time Toshe thought herself to be a boy. But it just did not feel right, you know, like something was wrong. So one day she decided that, no, I want to live my life as a woman, like the woman I know that I am inside. And she has never looked back. She spends her days teasing Asana, writing poems, and studying the stars. her face as Enyo because she too wanted to become a hunter. She was never that good, but she worked really hard anyway. But before she could get all her tattoos and become a fully fledged huntress, she was in an accident which left her blind. Because of that, she had to stop her training and find something else to do with her life. At first she was really sad, but later, with the help and love from her family and friends, she learned to be okay without her eyesight. She instead found a completely new calling to take care of animals. It's really ironic, isn't it? A future hunter becomes an animal lover? You will often find her sitting in the forest, listening and talking to wild animals. She's so calm that even bears won't harm her. She really was meant for this life. Thank you for watching! See you again!